Agape, thank you for joining us tonight for the Word on Wednesday. I am just thankful to be here. I'm thankful that God has sustained you and myself to this very present day and hour. But I am excited because I know what the Word can do. When God's Word manifests itself within us, the world changes within us, and we change the world. Oh, so praise God. Thank you. And I'm excited again about what we're getting ready to get into tonight. We're going to be in the book of Titus and really just start dealing with the reality uh, of the church or, or doing a reality check of how we should be and, and the purpose of why we're here. So we're going to be looking at the, uh, those things in these coming weeks. So I'm excited. So tonight, I just want to deal with what I would call a reality check, a reality check. All of us need to do some reality checks. We need to check ourselves uh, and, and just really look at uh, what's really going on. What we're, what are we doing and the purpose of why we are doing it? And so we're going to look at that tonight. Let's pray. Eternal God, we're grateful for this time together. We pray that our hearts are open tonight to receive your word. And once we receive your word, we're going to make a difference. We're going to change into the direction, into the people that you desire us to be. God, we thank you for each person that represents uh, their family tonight that are connected with us virtually. And we thank you for those who will connect with us virtually uh, through this lesson. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people say it. Amen. All right, let's get into the word tonight. I want to look at Titus and let's go into uh, Titus, the third chapter. We're going to read uh, verses three through eight, three through eight tonight. For we too were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, enslaved by various passions and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, detesting one another. But when the kindness of God, our Savior, and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us, not by works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. He poured out his spirit on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Lord, so that having been justified by his grace, we may become heirs with the hope of eternal life. This saying is trustworthy. Praise God. Praise God tonight as we get into the word. I want to just uh, share this with you. Our lives should serve as a welcome mat into the church. Our lives should, share, should serve as a welcome mat into the church. One of the things I, I, I've noticed in life, and, and not so much as one church versus another, just how people are, is that uh, we are not welcome at sometimes in the church. And many of you probably have experienced this. Uh, you go to a church and the church, uh, they let you in, but you leave feeling like a stranger. Uh, even in your homes, many homes have a mat that says welcome. And that welcome mat is to say, we want you to feel at home. You're welcomed here. And likewise, in the church, we tell people, oh, come, come as you are, come as you are. But do we really welcome people? And that's not an indictment on agape or any church. It's just a fact. I think sometimes we just need to have some reality checks. We need to have a reality check. Let's look at reality, what's really going on with us as people and, and as a church, a universal church, a local church, uh, what, what's really going on? Uh, we should be welcome at uh, our lives and, and our welcoming to the church. And so tonight we want to look at that and, and get into uh, what Titus is dealing with. Okay, let's look here. Uh, Titus, of course, had been with Paul. Now, 
he is on his own. He had traveled with Paul, seen the power of the gospel to change people's lives, and even carried a letter from Paul to the church at Corinth. Paul now has left Titus on the island of Crete to organize and carry out the beginning of the church there. Crete was, a, was foreign to both the gospel and Judaism. Titus would have had many questions about his role. What does it mean to be a pastor? Or how do I set up the work of the ministry? What should I do first? All of those things, brothers and sisters, are valid questions. You know, Titus had been with Paul. He he had uh, Paul had mentored him. He had worked with Paul. He had done things uh, the ministry with Paul. And now Paul was leaving him on this island to further the work of the ministry. And so Titus probably has very as we looked at Titus probably had several questions. Well, what is what, how should I act as a pastor? Or, or how do I start this ministry? Or what should I do first? All of these vital questions are, are important for Paul to answer Titus. Okay, now look, let's look here. I want to move it a little further. Paul addressed practical questions like these in the letter to Titus. But along with answers to practical ministry questions, Paul also reminded Titus of something that was already very familiar to him, which was the gospel. The gospel. So with all the pressing questions of how to do the work of, uh, of the church of Crete, why would Paul pause to remind Titus of something he already knew? And tonight we want to look at the three reasons uh, that we found in this passage uh, that will address that. Uh, why or what? 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 What's the purpose of Paul mentioning the gospel? And th think about that. All of us uh, go through uh, ministries and things, and uh, in the church, and we we create things. We want to do things. Uh, what should we do first? Or maybe you're trying to figure out what should I do? What 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 ministry should I be a part of? What what sh where should I address my skill set or my my talents? My uh, what what should I do? And so Paul addresses one thing important that's vital. He says the gospel. He or Titus already knew about that, but Paul addresses that. So I want to look at that tonight. I want to look at that. So let's look. Let's look and see. Look at verse 3. He said, well, the gospel keeps us from looking down at others. That's the first thing. For we too were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, enslaved by various passions and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, detesting one another. He says, the first thing he pulls out, he says, the gospel keeps us from looking down at others. The gospel keeps us from looking down at others. Think about that tonight, beloved. Paul is reminding Titus that he and all believers were once like the people they're trying to welcome into the faith. Now, notice, notice it. Isn't it a peculiar thing sometimes to see folks in the church? These are Christian folks who portray themselves as if they weren't brought out of something. Oh, yes. Yeah. So think about that. I want that, I want that to marinate for a little while. Paul is telling Titus that he and all the believers there on this island have to remember that they were once like the people they're trying to welcome in. In other words, he's saying, that, he's saying to Titus and, and what we're getting from the text tonight, that all of us were once lost, hopeless, living for nothing else than to fulfill our next desire. Oh, if the truth would be told tonight, if you would just be honest with yourself, we haven't been holy all of our lives. We haven't been saved. And even if we want to say you've been saved, we have not been committed to the walk all of our lives. 
And oftentimes, sometimes, or oftentimes, people, Christians, forget that they were once in the same boat as the person that's coming in. In other words, just as that, that un, unsaved person that's come into the building or someone who's struggling in their walk, we too have walked that mile before. That, that's why, that's why, that's why I've always, always insisted that 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 even in agape, that every seat was open. There was no set row for certain people to sit in, no certain order that uh, certain people had to sit in because of uh, rank and position, because we were all the same people. We all have come from something or we're all going through something or we're all coming out of something. And, and so what, what Paul is trying to remind Titus that as you go in, you may be the one that is planting and, and bringing forth and teaching, but you have to remember you were once in the same position that the people you're trying to reach and welcome in today. You see, here, here's why that is so important, beloved. When we remember that we are no better than those we are seeking to welcome into the building, then we will look on others, check this out, with compassion rather than judgment. Oh, that, 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 that someone needs to stick a pin in that and make sure it's done that night. Because what happens sometimes, we judge people. When they come into the church, we look at them funny. We 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 survey. We we read them up and down. We we examine them, and then we we betray ourselves to be something that we're really not. Look look. When we remember, here's the key. When when you remember from whence you've come from, when you remember that you were sinner, you were you were on your way to hell, you weren't living the right godly life. When you remember, and I remember where we've come from, when we are welcoming them other folks in, then we will learn to look on others with compassion, not judgment. That's the key. When you are looking into in judgment, then you are forsaking the fact that you forgot or you won't address the fact that you were once just like them. You were once a sinner. You were once messed up. You were once in a in a between a rock and a hard place. That's the key. That, that is one of the most important keys. Let's go back and look at look at the point. The gospel keeps us from looking down at or on others. The gospel keeps us from looking down. Look what the scripture says. For we too were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, enslaved by various passions and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, detesting one another. I think that touches all of us tonight. I think that touches all of us. Foolish, disobedient, we were all of that. We've been all of that. And the key is the gospel keeps us from forgetting. Because once we remember, continue to remember where he's brought us from, then when others come in, we will look upon them with compassion and not judgment. Let, let me go back one, one more time. Who among us, who among us, who has not acted like a fool, who's been disobedient, who's been a deceiver, who's not been enslaved by various passions and pleasure, I mean, in other words, everything else was a priority, but not God. And I was hooked on to what I was hooked on because that was my pleasure and my passion. Living in malice and envy, Hateful, detesting one another. The gospel keeps us from looking down at others that way. Because the gospel helps us to have compassion on others. 
and not judgment. Isn't that, isn't that a wonderful thing to realize the gospel? If you want the church to be the way God wants it to be, then we must address the fact that we have all, we've all been in a certain situation. We've all been out there. The key is I'm not going to forget where I've come from. So that when others come in, when I deal with others, whether they're in the building or outside of the church building, I will have compassion upon them and not judge them. I'm not going to look down at them. Because why? I've been there in some situations. You know, we sing that song. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases. It could have been me. Outdoors, no food, no clothes, no friends, just another tragic number, just another number with a tragic year, but he didn't see fit to let none of these things be. So I would say, what? Well, thank you, Lord. See, that's the key. That's that's the key. That's the key, I think, in, in beginning to, to do the reality check. Now, I want you to do a reality check tonight. Check yourself. Check yourself. What? How are you? What is your welcome like to someone else? How do you look at others? Do you have compassion? Or are you judging them? That's the key. Because if you remember that you know better than no one else, none of us are any better than anyone else that we're seeking to say, come on in. You know, sometimes we want other folks, sometimes we want other folks to come in who, who we think are less so we can make us feel better. And if that's the key, then you're not, the gospel is not working in your life. Okay? So Titus, Titus, Paul reminds Titus, that's why he says the gospel. He reminds Titus that he are, and the believers are just like the people they're trying to bring in. That, in other words, you come from there. You're no better. You've been there. So you need to learn. You have compassion. When we remember where we've come from, we have more compassion than judgment. All right. That's that's the first thing he found. Here's the, here's the second thing why Paul mentions the gospel. The gospel reminds us what is possible. The gospel reminds us what is possible. Who he says verses four and five. But when the kindness of God, our Savior, and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us, not by works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy through the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So the second thing Paul brings out of this about the gospel, the gospel reminds us what is possible. So, Paul here reminds Titus that all of us, if we are Christians, have a moment of awakening to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have that, that moment of awakening. We are born again with new hearts, tastes, and desires. He says, what? Let's go back and look at this. This says, the gospel reminds us of what is possible. In other words, when we have this awakening of, to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we are born again. That's it. We're born. Well, and because we're born again, guess what happens? You know this. You know this. We have a new heart, new taste. New desires. Look, we we said we've said this. I've said this in my whole life. I've heard it said, and I've used it. And probably you. I've got a new way of walking. I've got a new way of talking. The old things I used to do, I don't do any longer. The places I used to go, I don't go anymore any longer. The people I used to hang around, I don't hang around any longer because I realize. Through the gospel, here it goes, here it goes, look at what it says. The gospel reminds us of what is possible. Isn't it, isn't it a blessing to you to know that, that because of the word of God and you're connected to the word of God, you're connected to Christ, that there are some things that you realize are possible now? 
all things are possible. The gospel allows us, allows us to understand that and helps us to see that. Through the gospel, it, it reveals that, that all things are possible. That, that's what he said. He reminds Titus that, that, that because of God, all things are possible. Look what we've been experiencing for the last couple of years, this pandemic. And listening to everybody, and the naysayers and those people who say this, and those who say don't do this, and those who say that uh, don't do this, uh, you got to do this, you got to do that, don't do that. And, and what I try to rely on is that I list, I, I say the gospel because that's what makes things possible to me. That's what helps me to make it through what we go through. That's what keeps me keeps my mind focused and and, and keeps me me steady. Because what? The gospel. And I realized because in the gospel, all things are possible. Anything's possible. Even in the worst of situations that it seems to mankind, I still realize the gospel can, gospel can handle it. I can find an answer in the gospel. It makes things possible. Look at what it says again. The gospel reminds us what is Possible. Look at the text again. But when the kindness of God, our Savior, and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us, not by works of righteousness that we had done. We didn't do anything to, to gain this. We didn't do anything to earn it. But according to his mercy, his mercy suited our case through the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. He washed us. And he renewed us by his Holy Spirit. Now, because he is, we've been regenerated. Now, so I'm connected to Christ. And I can do all things through Christ's strength. Because I've been regenerated, I've been made over again. He has washed me. He has renewed me with his Holy Spirit. There is nothing that God cannot do for me or I cannot do through Christ. Because why? The gospel shows it. The gospel reminds us that anything's possible through Christ. And so Paul is reminding Titus that, that, that if we are Christian and we had a moment of awakening to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, in other words, when we come to that point of knowing that, that the light comes on, that, that light comes on, and, and, and the truth of the gospel is brightened up. All of a sudden, it comes to us. That, that's like that when, when we, we were uh, sinners. I, I remember, I shared this story a year. I remember I grew up in the church. And I, I grew up in the church and I was in the church, but the church wasn't in me. Somebody's going to understand what I mean. I was there, I was, I was a participant. I, I I was in the youth ministry because at our household you had to do something. So I, I was I was in the choir, the youth choir. Uh, part of the time I made usher, but the other key was my priority priority was playing baseball. And so I I played uh, high school ball, school ball. I played summer ball, and we would have games on Sunday. And so I I I, I got to leave. I got to leave early. Uh, or I had left right after church. I had to, I had to get to the game. But I also, I, I played basketball, and I didn't play on the school team. I played on the church team. And our church team was, a, we were a good team. We, we, were, we were winning championships in the city and, uh, because part of our team uh, had played on the high school team. And, and back then, kids, you get mad, you get, I ain't going to play no more. I'm play at church. And so we played, and and this one Sunday, after the season was over, of course, we were trophies, uh, all the team had to sit in the sanctuary. Well, normally, we had a balcony. I mean, you can guess where I'm going with that. We all sat in the balcony. But we had to sit on the first row. And, and that's really the first time, really, I, I sat, and the word kind of hit me. And we got to the end. Uh, uh, pastor, My pastor, Pastor Schultz, got to the end. He said, and he started talking about Christ, giving your life to Christ, and went through the whole process. And something came over me. There, there was a moment of awakening to the truth of God that I realized I wanted to make sure that I was going to heaven. 
and I wanted my life to change. And so I was sitting there and this guy sitting next to me and, and the spirit came upon me and told me, get up and, and, and make that walk down to that, to that first pew and sit down so you give your life to Christ. And every time I tried to get up, it's, it, I was being held back. And so I told my, my buddy next to me, I said, man, let go, you know, let go, let go of my leg. Take your hands on my leg. He said, my hand's not on your leg. And, and it hit me. The truth hit me again that the devil didn't want me to get up. So I kind of jumped up and walked on down there and gave my life to Christ. And, and I remember it as if it was yesterday. He said, do you believe that, that Jesus died for you? I said, yes. You believe that that he can change your life, that he'll start a new life. He went through the process, and I said, yes. And right then, uh, I gave my life to Christ, that, that awakening to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And guess what? The rest is history. Because I believe that that moment, the gospel of Jesus, and I believe that, that, it can, that anything would be possible in my life. Anything would be possible and everything has worked out because what? I trusted God because of the gospel, the gospel. So it, it, Paul is reminding Titus that all of us, if we're Christians, have had that moment of awakening to the truth of, God, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every one of us should have experienced that moment of awakening where we're born again. Old things are passed away. All things are new. Again, this is a reality check. I, I want you to do the reality check because we're talking about you and we're talking about the church. And unless the believers who are part of the church do reality checks, then what we if we don't do the reality check, what we're going through then is not reality. It's make believe. And so we we I want I want to do some reality checks. Here's the last thing that Paul is dealing with uh, from the text here that we read when he tells uh, Titus uh, the gospel. The gospel points us to the future. Look at verse six and seven. He poured out his spirit on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we may become heirs with the hope of eternal life. The gospel points us to the future. All right. Thanks to the gospel. Because because of the gospel, we all have a sure hope in the future. Because of God. Think about this. We come to Christ, but we have nothing to go by after that. Just think if that was the process. Oh, we came, but I don't know anything else. I just I just became a member. I just gave them my life. But that's not the way it worked. We have the gospel. And so as we're connected to God, and that's what Paul is trying to get Titus to understand now, it's the gospel. Everything else is great, but just the gospel. That we we have the sure hope of, uh, in the future because of the gospel. We are destined for eternal life with Jesus. Now notice here, because the reality check, the reality check of, of what we're dealing with is, is the church ought to be a welcome man. And so we might not be as welcoming as we should be because we have a very temporal view of life. That's, that's it. We have a temporal view of life. And that's the dangers of what we're dealing with is that we have to always do reality checks so that we don't get caught up in this temporal view of life. See, welcoming others may require us to be uncomfortable or inconvenient. Think about that. Welcoming the, us, uh, welcoming others may require us to be uncomfortable or inconvenient. In other words, you got to come out of your 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 circle. You got to come out of your your uh, comfort zone. See, we might need to step out outside our shell when we're talking about welcoming others. But when eternity is in the balance, and when we're thinking about eternity, now that's what eternity is in the balance. When we focus on eternity, these things are shown to be what they truly are, which are short-sighted objections. That's all they are. 
short-sighted object. Because when, 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 when eternity is in my view, heaven's in my view, it changes my perspective. It changes. So, so the key is the gospel, the, what the gospel does. And that's what Paul is trying to get Titus to remember is focusing upon the gospel, the gospel first, because the gospel keeps us where we need to be. And so tonight, I, I just want to get this reality check moving with us uh, 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 because wherever you go, it ought to be a welcoming to someone else. Not just a building, but in your life as a Christian, it ought to be a welcoming thing. Here's the last little thing I want to share tonight to conclude this part. If Titus wanted to create a, a sustained and empowered work for God on this island, he needed to remember the why before he started doing the what. Oh, my God. Let me read that again. If Titus wanted to create a sustained and empowered work for God on this island, he needed to remember the why before he started doing the what. Oh, my goodness. Let me let me just let me let me just stop right there. How many of you have focus on the what and not the why? You focus on the what, but not the why. And so it didn't work out the way it should have been because you were focused on the what and not the why. That's reality check. Okay, let's go back. And let's close it out. The same is true for us. If any ministry we seek to do for God is not grounded in the why of the gospel, it will eventually run out of steam. The why of the gospel. That ought to be that statement, the why of the gospel, everything should be focused on the why of the gospel. That's the reality check for our lives, the why of the gospel, not the what. Also, I thank God tonight for you as we just begin this reality check. Yes, the reality check. We are who we are because of the gospel the why of the gospel, not the what of the gospel. And I, and I just think it's the season of reality checks to check, to check ourselves and to look at who we really are as Christians. So I thank God for you again tonight. And I pray that this first lesson uh, dealing with the reality check in Titus has been a blessing to you about the gospel and what, what Paul was trying to get Titus to understand what was essential in his life was the gospel. Amen. God bless you. Thank God for you tonight. And I'm praying for you. I'm praying for the blessings of God upon your life, the, the safety of God, the covering of God. Uh, maybe there's somebody watching and we just really definitely want to give you an opportunity to come to Christ tonight if, if you're just connected with us. And uh, we just believe that Jesus is the best thing that could ever happen to you. It is for us. And so simply is to first acknowledging that you are a sinner, not saved. Secondly is to, to, uh, to acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God, that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died for your sins. And thirdly is to say, Lord, will you come into my life? I want to accept you. I'm a sinner and I'm on my way to hell. I want to receive you as my Savior. Will you come into my heart? And I'm here to tell you, my brother, my sister, that he will if you invite him in. God bless you. You'll see our address should come across the screen where you can contact us. If you're already a Christian, you're looking for a place to call home, we want we want to invite you to come, come visit us. Now, presently, presently, we are back virtually, uh, virtual service 100% for right now. And I sent the message out, but let me explain this. I work in the health field, healthcare field. I'm, I just, in my spirit, it just in my spirit, uh, beloved, that I just felt the Lord saying, just, just, just hold it for the next couple of weeks. Just, it was just important. And I said, I'm going to be obedient to, to what you tell me to do. So please understand I, it's not that I wanted to not have it, but it just said, I've got to be obedient. And so uh, I'm the under shepherd. My job is to be uh, a care, caretaker of you, your souls, your life. And so I want to make sure I do that the correct way. Uh, 
there will be many Sundays we'll be back. I'm not worried about that. Uh, next couple of Sundays, we're just going to just let this thing lay low so we can get back and, and keep it going the way we were going. Many of you have stayed on virtual, and I'm I'm happy about that. I'm I'm just I'm happy that you're making a decision uh, that you know you should make. Uh, we just opened up not too long ago, the middle of the summer, just so we can have some come back, sit sit at a distance. But because this variant is so contagious, you can call it the flu, call it what you want, it's still contagious. Uh, we're just going to be safe, okay? I love you, and I thank God for you. And so please be patient. Just, just wait on God. Uh, we're, we're, it's going to be okay. We've made it through this. This is just a bump. And so uh, we're going to make it on through and we're fine. All right. God bless you. God keep you. My wife sends her love to you. And I'm going to see you next week if the Lord is willing. God bless you. God keep you. We'll see you soon.